As President Biden touted his infrastructure plan to create jobs and stimulate the economy, one of the signature scams of the Trump era, a deal that was also supposed to create jobs and stimulate the economy, fell apart, revealing yet again that the GOP's new brand of supposed pro-worker populism is a giant fraud. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Let me just say right off the bat that we are aware that federal investigators executed search warrants of Rudy Giuliani's office and apartment this morning, and I promise we will have a lot more to say about it tomorrow, because there is no subject nearer and dearer to our hearts than Rudy Giuliani being a giant up. I'm guessing when they arrived, Rudy tried to flush his phone down the toilet as the feds were carrying away the toilet. Sir, it's a floor model. It's not attached to anything. Oh, no, Rudy, you dope! <laughs> You're supposed to have pipes! Also, President Biden delivered his first address to a joint session of Congress tonight. And we're taping this beforehand, so we don't know what he said, but something tells me he had a slightly different energy than the speeches he attended as President Obama's VP, where he was always doing stuff like grabbing John Boehner's arm or giving finger guns to people in the crowd like he was walking around a villa in Miami Beach making sure everyone at the pool party was having fun. Cam, that glass looks empty. You need a refill. Stacy, I better see you in the pool later. I got the jets turned on. Brad! Throw me another jog on the grill for me. I worked up on appetite kicking Steve's ass in volleyball. You gotta work on your dig, Steve. <laughs> One thing we do know about Biden's speech is that he's very likely spent some time touting his infrastructure plan. And as he pitches that plan, he's also dealing with an intransigent GOP that has its own idea for infrastructure, a GOP that's also trying to rebrand itself after decades of subservience to corporate interests as a populist pro-workers party. They've gone from defending so-called job creators and decrying class warfare to calling corporations that don't side with them on cultural issues woke. This past month, we have seen the rise of the woke corporation. We have seen the rise of big business enforcing a woke standard. I think corporate America, by trying to genuflect to this wokeness, uh, I think they've gone down a really bad road. They're going to tie themselves in knots trying to, to, to please the extreme left. Senator McConnell says corporations are, quote, behaving like woke parallel governments and becoming like a vehicle for far left mobs to hijack our country. Let's just cut to the chase. The big tech platforms are owned and operated by woke capitalists. They're leftists. They're liberals. There's no way Mark Zuckerberg is woke. At most, he's switched on. And none of those plutocrats are leftists. I'm pretty sure Jeff Bezos and Bernie Sanders aren't on the same page when it comes to most political issues. I doubt Bernie even uses Amazon. I get everything I need from the co-op, and when I run out of batteries, I just connect some copper wire to a potato. Hey, turn down the AC. Potatoes don't grow on trees. And just because they pulled some Dr. Seuss books with racist language and put out statements against voter suppression laws doesn't mean companies like Amazon and Delta are suddenly woke. For one thing, they both tried to bust unions. Amazon put up anti-union posters in employee bathrooms, and Delta handed out flyers that said union dues cost around $700 a year. A new video game system with the latest hits sounds like fun. Put your money toward that instead of paying dues to the union. Yeah, exactly. And if you get sick in real life, all you have to do is hit a brick with your head until a mushroom pops out. The point is these giant corporations aren't suddenly woke just because they've done the bare minimum of, say, coming out against racist voter suppression laws, but Republicans are still infuriated by that. So they've tried to co-opt the anti-corporate language of actual left-wing populists like Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, and AOC. For example, Florida Senator Marco Rubio wrote an absolutely ludicrous screed against supposedly woke corporations in the New York Post this week where he said no policymaker would allow a company to dump toxic waste into a river upstream of a thriving town he is charged with governing. Yet corporate America eagerly dumps woke toxic nonsense into our culture, and it's only gotten more destructive with time. These campaigns will be met with the same strength that any other polluter should expect. What any other polluter should expect? So basically total and complete loyalty from the GOP. Republicans cut so many environmental regulations, I'm pretty sure they made it legal to sell toxic sludge as an energy drink. And do I drink a sludge every now and then? But yeah, it's only because I'm up all night writing this week's corrections. These guys are in many ways just following in Donald Trump's footsteps. He was not in any serious way a populist, except that he co-opted some of the language of populism while doling out trillions and giveaways to corporations that mostly just 
gave the money to their wealthy investors. Trump, for example, said the 2017 tax cuts would be rocket fuel for the economy. And earlier this month, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said rolling them back would destroy jobs. This tax bill of 2017, undone, uh, would create an extensive loss of jobs in our country, do exactly the wrong thing, and move us in the wrong direction. You hear that, woke corporations? The Republican Party is on to you. If you don't stop dumping woke, toxic waste into our cultural river, then we are going to punish you by allowing you to continue paying zero dollars in federal income taxes. That can't be right. Wally, I think the card's wrong. That's what it said in the script. But does it seem right to you? Hey, Seth, I just write the cards, baby. <laughs> Wally, the only way you could be cooler is if you wore sunglasses under your face shield. Anyway, the point is, this is the scam. Republicans call themselves pro-worker populists while doling out cash to giant companies who mostly use it to decrease their tax liabilities and enrich their wealthy investors, even though the whole point was supposed to be to use that money to invest in the economy and create jobs. And there was a perfect test case of this scam in Wisconsin at the start of Trump's presidency. After months of speculation, Foxconn promises to build its first American factory here in Wisconsin. It's the largest economic development project in state history and will initially require more than 16,000 construction jobs sourced from Wisconsin businesses. The LCD manufacturing campus expected to be operational in 2020, and the project expected to have at least a $7 billion annual economic impact on the state. And with this project moving forward, Governor Walker coined a new term today, the Wisconsin Valley, describing our area as a new hub for technology and innovation. They wouldn't have done it here except that I became president, so that's good. Congratulations on truly one of the eighth wonder. I, I think we can say this is, we can say, the eighth wonder of the world. This is the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah, it goes uh, Great Pyramids, uh, the Colossus of Rhodes, and then a factory in Wisconsin. You get the sense Trump has used eighth wonder of the world to describe a lot of his projects over the year. Trump Taj Mahal, it's gonna be the eighth wonder of the world, blackjack tables, cocktail waitresses, and we're gonna pump in oxygen to keep people gambling longer, just like the guy who built the real Taj Mahal, the emperor, Shan Jahan, great guy, great guy. Met him at Studio 54 back in 86. He was there with Christy Brinkley, she went on, to marry Billy Joel, Mr. Piano Guy himself. You know, I love the song. We didn't start the fire, but I always thought Trump should be in that song. A lot of famous people in there, but no Trump. What do we think, folks? Should Trump be? Should Trump be in We Didn't Start the Fire? Space Monkey, Mafia, Donald Trump. Has a nice ring to it. You don't want to mess with the Space Monkey Mafia. Almost impossible to do construction on other planets. <laughs> Got to kick back a lot of space bananas. You know, they'll say, they'll say Trump tried to start the fire. But we know that's not true. We know that's not true. <laughs> the Foxconn deal was supposed to be the shining example of Trump's claim that he was bringing manufacturing jobs back to the United States. And it was proof of concept for the Republican way of doing it, not by investing directly in infrastructure, but by doling out subsidies to big companies. Trump was even there for the groundbreaking ceremony with then Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, where he picked up some dirt with a gold shovel and then gently tossed it back on the ground <laughs> near the spot where he dug it up from. There you go, uh, loosened up for you. For a guy who was supposedly in construction, he doesn't even know how to fake it. If you handed him a hammer, he would talk into it like a phone. Send me your best nail guy. Under the deal, Foxconn was promised a stunning $4 billion in taxpayer subsidies. And in return, they were supposed to spend $10 billion employing 13,000 people at a 20 million square foot manufacturing campus in Wisconsin and instantly established Wisconsin as a destination for tech firms. Again, this was supposed to be proof positive of Trump's ability to magically bring back manufacturing jobs without actually making any of the real direct investments in the economy that say Joe Biden and the Democrats are now proposing. It was also a distillation of the core GOP philosophy, which is that if you give massive handouts to giant businesses that are already flush with cash, instead of giving the money directly to workers, those handouts will eventually trickle down and create jobs. And credit, where it's due, the plan worked. The project has been a huge success. What's that? It wasn't? Shoemaker, you gotta tell me this stuff. 
before the show. This is not cool. Wally, are you cool with this? I'm cool with everything, baby. <laughs> Rock and roll, Wally. How could I stay mad? The point is, the Foxconn deal was a giant scam. It was obvious it was a scam from the very beginning. For one thing, they kept missing key goals and failing to deliver on their promises, cycling from one idea to the next. This is a real summary of all the different projects Foxconn considered for the site. The company spent years pivoting wildly from idea to idea. The enormous Gen 10.5 LCD factory specified in the contract became a far smaller Gen 6, then was canceled, then came back. The company announced it was building something called the AI plus 8K plus 5G ecosystem to be developed in a network of innovation centers, buildings that the company purchased only to leave empty. It looked into building fish farms, exporting ice cream, storing boats. It announced plans to build coffee kiosks and ventilators that never move forward. Most recently, it said it would build electric cars, though maybe the company acknowledged that will happen in Mexico. Man, that sounds like how I plan a Mother's Day gift for my wife. I'm going to commission a painting of our family. Nope, I don't have time for that. I'm going to take a picture of our family. Nope, ran out of time. I'm going to find an existing picture of our family and have it framed. Nope, I don't have time. I'm going to find an existing picture of our family and text it to her with Happy Mother's Day. Nope, I'm going to forget entirely, and then I'm going to wake up two Sundays from now in an empty bed while it slowly dawns on me that I am Honey, I built you a place to store boats. And yet, as this scam was unfolding, the village where the campus was supposed to be located was in the process of buying up properties and building new roads to make way for this fancy new factory they were promised. Wisconsin has already spent at least $400 million on land and infrastructure, and as of 2019, the village where the plant is located had paid just over $152 million for 132 properties to make way for Foxconn, plus $7.9 million in relocation costs. Meanwhile, Foxconn owns a lot of real estate in southern Wisconsin now, and it has built an odd collection of buildings, including the million-square-foot structure it called the LCD Fab and a glass orb. Cool, so now instead of 13,000 jobs building high-tech LCD displays, taxpayers ended up spending hundreds of millions of dollars on a useless glass orb. Although, shout out to Donald Trump on being our first two-orb president. What do you even do with a glass orb you don't need anymore? Turn it into a community center? All right, kids, it's time for a recess. Everyone, line up outside the glass orb, and remember, do not touch the orb. We still don't know what it does or what its powers are. Or maybe they'll use it as a Packers training facility. All right, go along. But remember, don't run into the glass wall again. But it gets even crazier than that because the state actually demolished homes and built new roads that, in a metaphor that's almost too on the nose, actually lead to nowhere. Former President Trump announced Foxconn was coming July 26, 2017. The following June, Trump, former Congressman Paul Ryan, and former Governor Scott Walker were among those who broke ground on the plant in Mount Pleasant. And since then, roads have been widened, land flattened, homes demolished, and the plant has not built anything yet. I was there. It's, it's the weirdest thing, Bertha. There's basically a giant clear dome that I think is some kind of data center slash mm. museum, a couple of big warehouses, and then farms and, and some homes down the street. It is, there's a bunch of new roads that kind of lead to nowhere. What do they use for the blueprints? An MC Escher dorm room poster? A giant orb and a bunch of roads that lead to nowhere. This whole thing is starting to sound like a David Lynch project. Did they also give him $4 million to build a state-of-the-art red room where a little man in a red suit teaches you how to dance and talk in reverse? And even now that Foxconn has mostly abandoned the project, they're still scooping up taxpayer handouts even as they leave behind a trail of debt, broken promises, and chaos. Foxconn is still eligible for $80 million in tax subsidies, and under the revised deal, the state is still paying a per-job subsidy of about $55,000. $55,000 for each job. Instead of giving that to a massive foreign company, how about you give that directly to workers to build useful stuff here, like bridges and broadband infrastructure, instead of roads to nowhere and a giant glass orb that's just going to sit there empty and inevitably cause traffic delays? Honey, I'm going to go to Kroger's to pick up some milk. I'll be back in about two hours. The road leads to nowhere. i got to go around the giant orb. What do you mean, which giant orb? The Foxconn orb. You turn off the hair dryer if you want to have this conversation. So as Biden talks up his infrastructure plan, which would raise corporate taxes in order to make direct investments in workers to build things we actually need, the Foxconn scam is a cautionary tale about what Republicans would have us do with that money instead. They want to shovel handouts to giant corporations already flush with cash. 
And all the while, they're ludicrously trying to rebrand themselves as a party of pro-worker populists. Say what you will about a scam like this, but one thing's for sure. They wouldn't have done it here except that I became president. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated. We love you.